You... Good, I like that. You're swishing the ear. You hear that loud wind whistle. Let's go ahead and swing some balls now. Make sure you, the ball's just going to get in the way. Your mind, your attention is on this rounder swing and that nice tin pose. No, my tendency is to play the ball right off my left foot. Perfect. Okay. If you weren't doing that, I would change it to oh. that. <laughs> Now, I can tell you from observation, your club head was right here. Right. You sat up here, your club oh, returned, okay. it was out here. Okay. So, so I want you to set up where the ball is on your on the toe of the club. Okay. You measure yourself, do not put the ball in the middle of your club face. And now that that's that now let's have that rounder swing. Good. That's straight. That was straight. Every time, set it up on the toe. Different than the next guy's perfect. But you've got to really make sure that's right every time. That's a good shot. A lot of unthought the things going at all there. And, you, and, you, and you, I like what you said when you said, I like to play it on my left foot. Now. Don't move. See this rubber tee? Yeah. You know they cut these to be opposite the other tee? You think you're on your left foot. You're not. Oh, really? My camera wasn't set square to the mat, so the red line is uh, angled a little bit in order to be square to the mat. But you can see how uh, the ball position that I'm set up is on my left heel, and it's uh, closer to the, almost to the middle of your stance when you set up. Let's put that in the bottom. That's straight. Okay, so one of the reasons is you're hitting a little more consistently than what I've been seeing is maybe your number one position is better. Your, your pre-shot measurement is better. Yeah. Yeah. In that the way you set up before, it almost guaranteed that you'd be doing this. You're sitting here and extending your arm through impact. Bill, this is a close-up of your grip. And you start out with consciously gripping the club in a very good position, and then subconsciously, right before you take the club back, you do a re-grip and pull the club back, and you change the position of your right hand, and that causes problems. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Oh, it it's it's sliced. One of the reasons I use video and like video is it allows me to see things that I could not see when I was with you in person. I saw you re-gripping the club right before you took it back, but I really wasn't sure the extent of the problem it may cause. Bill, the other thing I noticed that you did was you had a re-gripping issue. You had set up with a comfortable grip and then, uh, then that you would start fiddling with your, your fingers would start moving and fiddling and you weren't even aware of it. You were just, and then right before you took the club back, you would do a quick re-grip with the right hand. And it's not something that you are aware of. It's not something you did consciously, but you do it un subconsciously. And you put that right hand in a position that is, it is not optimal. You actually start out with a, a very solid grip on the left is the grip that you you choose to hold the club with when you're consciously thinking about your hands on the club. And I've drawn a, uh, a blue angle uh, line. It's not actually a straight line. It is uh, right at the back of the wrist. I have, is there's a little bend there. It's a two degree angle. If that was a straight line, it'd be 180 degrees, and it's 178. So you actually have just a, almost a straight line on the back of the right hand when you set up. Another thing that uh, we know in, in golf instruction is that uh, we would like to see the creases in both hands, and that's these, these, these creases right here. And I'm going to draw a red arrow on those creases. They need to be somewhat parallel to each other which yours are, and angle somewhere uh, to the right side of your body, somewhere 
uh, maybe closer to the right shoulder. Some people, it's between the, the right ear and the right shoulder. I'm sorry, the way you hold your club on the left is uh, a pretty good grip. And particularly, I'm talking about the right hand. I like both hands. But you have a, a tendency, and I'm going to frame advance this now. You're all set up and getting close to being ready to hit. But that right there, you see you're, you let go. And this is right before you take the club back. And it's, it's a very quick movement that you don't even realize you do. And you've now re-gripped the club and take it back. The picture on the right is where your right hand ended up right before you took it back. And let's see how, you, how much you change that. And now you have changed the angle in the back of that right wrist by a difference of 17 degrees. That's quite quite major. Now that's going way over here. Your right hand has now gone way underneath the grip. It's almost as if now your palm is, is aiming here, whereas before your palm was aiming, was basically on the same plane as the face of the club. Ideally, you would like your palm aiming to the target when you set up, as if you just extended your right palm straight out in front of you, as if you're going to slap a, uh, hit, hit a beach ball with your palm. And so you've rolled that rolled that hand way under. Uh, that's going to create a lot of inconsistency in delivering the face of the club square to the ball the same way every time. Because when you do that real quick regrip and you put that roll that right hand underneath, it's hard for the right hand to to participate in helping you square the club up. If you roll that right hand to a palm position at impact, you're going to hit it way left. If you resist that. And you would have to resist that, that natural release of the right hand when your grip is that far underneath. If you resist that, then it might be square, but it also might be open. So, Bill, in this first session, we worked on several things. Your setup, get, getting an extended arm so that your geometry measurement before you set up to the golf ball is consistent so that uh, you can deliver the sweet spot of the club face at the same location at impact as you set up with and if, and you had a tendency to have two different measurements uh, your setup measurement was different than your hitting measurement with the iron we worked on getting the low point of your swing arc in front of the golf ball so that you could hit down on the ball and hit the ball before you hit uh, the ground and that improved your solid contact and, um, and so you had to stay on your left side you learned how not to sway to the right and uh, that really helped quite a bit so in your backswing, we tried to stabilize your golf circle, stay on, on the left side, and then on the downswing and the follow-through, we worked on finishing stronger on the left leg with a nice pro finish where you're on the tip of the toe of your back foot, and that looked really good. Now, you don't own these changes, but you did see some small glimpses of what these changes can do for you once you become comfortable with them and they become natural for you. If you took one piano lesson, you wouldn't be playing, you know, beautiful music after one lesson. Now, if you wanted to shoot better scores, say in three or four months, you would have to start working and practicing on these changes. And maybe even occasionally let me review it again, have another session with me. You don't have to have uh, constant lessons to get this done. You these videos give you information that you can review and work on. So you kind of know what to practice. And uh, if we do get together again, I'll kind of give you a game plan, a, a, a practice routine. Now, in order to transfer these changes to the golf course, you're going to have to, for a while, change the way you approach your shots on the golf course. In our first session, I couldn't cover everything that, that you need to work on. But one of the things that uh, we need to establish is a pre-shot routine that allows you to put your attention on the correct things and in the correct sequence right before you hit a shot on the course. 